Hoops Graphics presents Mastering the Star Test, 6th grade math. Today we'll learn about equivalent ratios, how to model and the properties of them. What is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. It can be written as a fraction with a colon or the word two. Let's take the ratio two over three. To model it, the denominator tells you the number of pieces, while the numerator tells you how many pieces are x. How can we make an equivalent ratio of two over three? Let's start by slicing the pieces horizontally in half. Now the two over three has become four over six. Now let's go back to our original ratio of two over three and slice through the rectangle two times horizontally. The two thirds has become six over nine. Two thirds, four six, and six ninths are equivalent ratios. Notice how the numerators are multiples of two and the denominators are multiples of three. We can extend the list indefinitely. Now let's look at some properties of equivalent ratios. If you take the quotients of equivalent ratios, such as 2 divided by 3 and 4 divided by 6, they always come up with the same answer. In this instance, if you divide the numerator by the denominator, you'll always get 0.666. One property of equivalent ratios is they have equivalent quotients. In this example, the equivalent ratios of 2 over 3 all have a quotient of 0.666. Equivalent ratios have equivalent quotients. But wait, there's more. There's another important property of equivalent ratios. This property involves the cross products of equivalent ratios. If you take 2 over 3 and 6 over 9 and circle the cross products, they will always equal in equivalent ratios. In this case, 2 times 9 will equal 18, which is the same as 6 times 3. This will hold true for any pair. Let's take 4 over 6 and 10 over 15. If we circle the cross products of 4 over 6 and 10 over 15, we would circle 4 and 15 and 10 and 6. 4 times 15 would be the same as 10 times 6. In this case, they'll both equal 60. Equivalent ratios have equivalent cross products. Now let's look at the ratio of 12 over 16. We can make an equivalent ratio by taking out one of the lines and moving the other two. That would create a ratio of 9 over 12. 12 over 16 would be the same as 9 over 12. If you take one bar out of 9 over 12 and move the other bar up, you would have 6 over 8. 6 over 8 would also be equivalent to 9 over 12. Notice how the pieces are getting larger. Let's take out the last line. If you did that, 6 eighths would become 3 fourths. All of these ratios are equivalent. Notice that the pieces in this instance got larger and not smaller. The properties of the equivalent ratio still hold true. If you take the quotients of these ratios, 12 divided by 16, 9 divided by 12, and so forth, they would all equal to 75 hundredths. Equivalent ratios would also have equal cross products. Let's just take two of the ratios. Let's take 12 over 16 and 3 over 4. The products would be 12 and 4 and 3 and 16. They would have products of 48. Equivalent ratios have equivalent cross products. You can also create equivalent ratios by simplifying with the GCF. Let's take our ratio 12 over 16 and get the factors of the numerator and denominator. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. The factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. The greatest of these common factors would be 4. To simplify the ratio 12 over 16, we would divide the numerator and denominator by 4. That would simplify the ratio to 3 over 4. You would then take your simplified ratio of 3 over 4 and write the multiples of 3 for the numerator and the multiples of 4 for the denominator. You would create ratios with the corresponding multiples 
giving you the same equivalent ratio. Note how these are the same ratios created by using the modeling technique. Now it's your turn. On your own paper, let's write out two ratios that are equivalent to 3 over 5. You need to model all the ratios, find the quotients of two of the ratios, and check using two cross products. Let's see how you did. The first thing would be to model three-fifths, then cut it in half with one horizontal line. The three-fifths would now turn into six-tenths. Notice how both fraction models take up the same amount of space. Now you would take the three-fifths and slice it twice horizontally and come up with nine over fifteen. Three-fifths, six-tenths, and nine-fifteenths are equivalent ratios. Let's look at the quotients of the equivalent ratios. If you would take 3 and divide it by 5, you would get 6 tenths. If you take 6 and divide by 10, you would also get 6 tenths. And lastly, 9 divided by 15 would also equal to 6 tenths. The quotients are all equal in the equivalent ratios. Now let's look at the other property of equivalent ratios, cross products. Let's take the cross products of 3 over 5 and 6 over 10. 3 times 10 would equal to 6 times 5. The same holds true if we take the cross products of 6 over 10 and 9 over 15. 6 times 15 would equal to 9 times 10, having products of 90. Equivalent ratios have equivalent cross products. Let's do one more problem to practice. Write out two ratios that are equivalent to 15 over 24. This time the pieces in the rectangle will get larger. Start with a model that has eight columns and three rows. Make sure you decrease the value of the numerator and denominator. Model all the ratios and check using two cross products. Let's see how you did. We need to model two ratios that were equivalent to 15 over 24. You should have started off by modeling 15 over 24. It would have eight columns and three rows with 15 of the pieces X'd in. The first thing you would want to do to 15 over 24 to make an equivalent ratio is to take out the top line and move the bottom line up to the middle. This would create an equivalent ratio of 10 over 16. To make the next equivalent ratio, you should have crossed out the middle bar of 10 over 16. 
Now the 10 over 16 turns into the equivalent ratio of 5 over 8. 15 over 24, 10 over 16, and 5 over 8 are equivalent ratios. Now let's check using cross products. Let's compare 10 over 16 to 5 over 8. The cross products would be 10 and 8 and 5 and 16. If the ratios are equivalent, then 10 times 8 should equal to 5 times 16. 10 times 8 and 5 times 16 both have products of 80. Remember, you could use the GCF of the numerator and denominator to also create equivalent ratios. In this case, the GCF of 15 and 24 would be 3. 15 divided by 3 would be 5, and 24 divided by 3 would be 8. The simplified ratio of 15 over 24 would be 5 over 8. Now you take the simplified ratio and write the multiples of the numerator and denominator out. Then you would convert the corresponding quantities into ratios, giving you equivalent ratios. Let's look at what we learned. Equivalent ratios can be modeled. If you were to take a model of 2 over 3 and slice it and cross with a horizontal line, you would get 4 over 6. Then if you went back to your 2 over 3 model and sliced it twice horizontally, you would have 6 over 9. The models would create the equivalent ratios of 2 over 3, 4 over 6, and 6 over 9. Another property of these equivalent ratios is that they would have equivalent quotients. 2 over 3, 4 over 6, and 6 over 9 would all have equivalent quotients of 0 0.6666. Equivalent ratios have equivalent quotients. Equivalent ratios also have equivalent cross products. Let's look at the cross products of 2 over 3 and 4 over 6. The cross products would be 2 times 6 and 4 times 3, which both have products of 12. In review, equivalent ratios have equivalent models. Equivalent ratios also have equivalent quotients. And lastly, equivalent ratios have equivalent cross products. Equivalent ratios, they give you more power. This video was produced by Tubes Graphics. Tubes Graphics, always believe.